Okay, Camtasia says it's going, and I hope you guys can still hear me, and we'll go ahead and get started. I want to thank everybody for coming out to the call tonight. We've got a couple of things we're going to do tonight. I've actually got a software demo we're going to do for you guys, and then we're going to talk about uh, done for you sales funnels. Uh, I've had several questions over the last couple of weeks about done for you sales funnels. In particular, uh, any of you that send me an email, I have an auto signature in my replies that has a link to a done for you sales funnel that uh, Aaron Danker sells, and I've had several people ask about that type of thing. So I thought I would go over those a little bit tonight. But like I said, I've also got a software demo I want to show you guys. As you guys know, I'm all about automation um, and repurposing content that I have that I've purchased and I'm sure all of you all have tons of it too if you're a member of any PLR or Master Resale Rights membership sites you've got tons of content on your hard drive it's just sitting there and you're not using it so like I said I'm all about automation and using that stuff um, and one of the Skype groups I'm in they call me the repurposing king because I find ways to repurpose this stuff guys I mean there's no point in having PLR if you're not going to use it um, you're just throwing your money away, you know, if you download this stuff, just let it sit there and you don't do anything with it. And in fact, um, somewhere, I don't know where I've got it at, but somewhere, and I'll, I'll dig it up and send you guys a link to it sometime, but somewhere I've got an ebook that tells you the eight different ways you can repurpose content. When I find it, I'll send you guys a link to that. It's, it's you know, it's an ebook, it's a couple, three years old, but, you know, it's evergreen, you know, the, the methods still work in it. And I don't say that I do all eight of those things that's in that ebook, but I do the majority of them. I don't know if we got any new faces in here tonight or not. I think pretty much everybody has been here. But just in case somebody's watching the replay, there's nothing for sale here tonight. This is all a webinar just for you guys. Uh, I do these once a week on Monday evenings, you know, Lord willing. Nothing happens, you know, don't have bad electricity, electrical storms or whatever. These are all for you guys. Uh, I usually come on here and do a demo of some sort or a presentation of some sort. Occasionally I have a video and I'm working my way up to getting enough people in here to we can have some live guests. Uh, we're still far from being able to do that, but we're working on it. We'll eventually get to the point where we can have some live guests on here. But there's nothing for sale here tonight, even though there might be a product mentioned. And saying that uh, the video I'm going to show you the guys tonight on that software demo at the very end of it there is a pitch to buy the product and I just want you to ignore that I made this video probably two years ago and I actually sent it out to my list a couple years ago when I first started selling that product but the reason why I'm going to play the video tonight is just to show you guys another method that you can use with your PLR master resale rights that you have um, that's the whole purpose of showing the video, not to get you guys to buy the program, even though, you know, it is for sale if you do want to buy it all. You know, like I said, I'm not here to pitch the program at all, but I just want to show you guys the demo of what you can do with this software to repurpose PLR content. And then, like I said, uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is done for you sales funnels. And then um, we're going to take uh, some questions. I didn't get, I think, three questions this week in the forum replies. And then we'll take your guys' live questions after that. Does that sound like a good plan to you guys? Does that sound like something you're excited to see? Can I get a yay or an A? <laughs> yep, okay, Roy agrees. Roy's going to stick with me anyway. <laughs> okay. Uh, you guys probably noticed my picture has changed over here on the right. You guys see that? It's, it's got my original picture that I used to use for branding. I first started in internet marketing when they did the conference room upgrade they lost all of my files I'd uploaded and um, this was I don't I, I don't know how this picture actually got in here I used to have GVO conference years ago and then I switched to the this the meat cheap version of GVO conference and I guess from where I had the other version this was the picture I was using back then I'm not sure how they got this but anyway it lost the the current picture that I use but that's me years ago that's me that, 
picture's probably 1998. No, 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 it's not that old. It's probably 2003 or so. Anyway, it's it's a good several years old. I don't look like that anymore, guys. You guys have seen my picture. You know I don't look like that. I don't have that much hair anymore. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to... Like I said, I want, I want to play the demo video for you first, and then we're going to talk about some done for you sales funnels. Hi guys, today I wanted to show you a demo of a nice little program I just discovered the past week. Uh, it's a program called eCourse PowerBot, and I also wanted to show you an, an easy profit strategy. You can use it for using all that PR that you have on your hard drive. If you're like most people, if you've been involved in internet marketing or online marketing for any length of time at all, you, you've got tons of this PR articles and newsletters stored on your hard drive and really there's just nothing you can do with it unless you want to spend the time to actually rework it and create products with it. Well with the Power eCourse PowerBot, I want to show you an easy way you can use that PR that you have and finally get some cash out of what you've downloaded. Okay, first off I want to go over some of the problems with PLR. Uh, most of these should be pretty obvious to you. Um, if you're new to online marketing you may not know this, but uh, I want to go over just a few of the problems that, that you incur with private label rights articles and newsletters. The first off is should be obvious to everybody the content isn't unique. Uh, you can just about bet if you have it that thousands or at least hundreds of other people have the same content as you. So there's nothing unique about your content. Being as such, you can't submit these PR articles to article directories. They'll reject them as soon as you submit them. So that's a big drawback. A lot of people buy a PR thinking that they can just post it to the article directories. And you know, the first one or two people that get it, if it's brand new PR, do get away with that. But then after that, after two or three people have used it, there's there's no submitting it anymore to the article directories. Also, with PR articles and newsletters, you, you can't really post them to your blog. After a time or two of somebody posting them to their blog, they're indexed in the in the search engines, and you get uh, penalized for having duplicate content. Now, it's not to say that your blog would get uh, de-indexed for having uh, PR articles posted to it. It's just that you would fall into the duplicate content filters, which if you don't know what that is, if you do a search, take any one of your PR articles and just do a search for the first line or two and that you'll you'll find that there are probably hundreds of listings in the search engines for it, but you'll notice that uh, only uh, two or three of them are shown, and that the rest of them fall under the duplicate content filter, which means that you know they're they're never really shown. So the first few that get posted get indexed and will be shown in the search engines, but the rest of them will be there, but they'll be hidden under that filter. So the solution to it is you have to spend hours or sometimes even days rewriting this PR to be able to use it. And that's that's not really a good option if you have tons of it. Um you could spend you could actually pay people to outs outsource and pay people to rewrite it for you, but that's gonna cost you money. So either way you're gonna be spending your own time rewriting it or paying someone else to, to rewrite the content so you can use it. But there's a good solution to this, using this PR, and that's the eCourse PowerBot. And that's what I want to show you a demo of. I'm going to actually create uh, an eCourse with PLR that uh, I have out here on my hard drive and show you exactly how easy it is and how quick it is. Okay, this is a real quick demo of what the eCourse PowerBot program does. After you started the program and unlocked it, uh, you'll be presented with a screen like this. First thing you would do is click on the click here to use the Create eCourse Package tool. And you would click 
click on the select file and find your PLR newsletter set or article set I'm going to choose this one on affiliate marketing profits Okay, and then you would give your e-course a name. Give it a, put in a site name. This would be your website where you're distributing this uh, e-course. I'm going to put in my software website here and then you put, of course put the the link this is actually what will be the URL people when they click on your site name this is where it would take them so use the full URL HTTP colon colon, colon slash slash in front of it that's dot net And then uh, your ad title. Then this would be on the um, on the bottom of each one of the parts of the e-course. There'll be a section for an ad. You can put any kind of title you want here. Um, I've pre-selected a uh, an affiliate a ClickBank product here, so um, you can type something in, or you can leave this blank if you want to. Um, the, product I chose was Stealth Profit Machine so we'll just put um, well, your own Stealth profit machine and of course next is the add image I'll select an image here and there's my image and then the add text now with the add text you can put any kind of text you want here, just plain text and it will auto format it or if you want to get fancy you can use an HTML editor and create uh, different fonts and uh, different sizes of the fonts and centering and anything you can do with HTML. Um, I'm just going to enter just the straight text here. I've already pre-selected all of that. And then the next is the add link text. Well, I'm going to leave it at the show me the details. Then you put your add link, which is again is a URL to your uh, product that you want to promote. Now the next section is the days between posts. Uh, you can leave this blank and all of your e-course will be available as soon as they load the pro load the program or you can set increments of days that you want it to unlock uh, that's up to you if you want to do that or not uh, generally on these things I just set it at, bl at blank and don't uh, lock them but it's up to you you can set it to unlock an article every day if you want to and unlock code that's where if you wanted to say give the first two articles for free and then uh, make them pay to get the rest of the articles you would uh, set it to they'd have to have a code so you type in some sort of a code here and then the code URL this is where you'd actually send them to to make the purchase and then to, to obtain the code and of course this doesn't have to be for pay you could do it for um, uh, just getting
getting them to sign up to your list. And then uh, the unlock free parts is if you did decide to use the unlock code, how many parts of the e-course you do want to unlock. I'm going to leave this blank too. And then of course the your name section, which is just your name. Alright, then after you've done all that, you just click create. And it's going to ask you what you want to save it as, and we call this affiliate marketing profits. And by the way, this is one of the 12 e courses that you get with the uh, e course PowerBot program as a bonus. Just click save. And there you see it. The package has been successfully created. Okay, now we'll open up our package we just created and show you what it looks like. And first off, we have to agree to the terms that it's. Uh, standard software liability and disclaimer and here we have our foot marketing profits e-course and as you can see I have all the parts unlocked and it's got part one two three four five all the way up to part seven in this particular one but if you click on one of those you see part one there and if you scroll down and you see the the ad that I put into it. And that's a quick demo of the uh, eCourse PowerBot program. Okay, we've just seen a real quick demo of the eCourse PowerBot in use, and as you've seen with uh, even with me having to explain every step of the way so you can see what I was doing. It took less than 10 minutes to create a, a, a unique product from some PLR that was sitting on my hard drive. Uh, real quickly I want to go over some of the other benefits that the eCourse PowerBot offers. Obviously the most important one is you can use PLR as you have it on your hard drive. Don't have to rewrite the content which is a big time saver and money saver. It allows you to create your own unique products. If you've been involved in internet marketing any length of time at all you know that the real money is made on the internet by having your own set of products that you can market and get affiliates to market for you. It also allows you to bring your subscribers into your sales and profit funnels by offering free courses and the upsells with the ads in it or by locking the uh, parts of the course and having them to uh, either subscribe to your list or pay to get the rest of the e-course. And of course you can advertise product upsells. The e-course could be the free product that you use to get them onto your list and then you could offer an advanced course that you actually upsell to your subscribers. Alright, so if you've been waiting all this time for the e-course e PowerBot profit strategy, I'm going to reveal that to you now. Now, what I'm about to tell you is one of the hottest properties out on the internet right now. It's one of the most uh, strategic methods for making money. Um, lots of people are doing this right now and I just wanted to let you know that this is one of the things you can do with the eCourse PowerBot and that's to create your own fixed term memberships. Now if you're not familiar with the fixed term membership what those are, they are memberships that are different from your traditional memberships that are the kind where you have to pay a monthly fee and it's ongoing and you got to add content to it monthly. They're a lot of work, and it's uh, they typically have a lot of uh, people to drop out of them after two or three months. Well, fixed-term memberships are memberships that have an ending point to them. You start out with uh, all of your content ready, and you put uh, a fixed price on the on the membership, and they you generally run 12 to 16 weeks. And I have seen them go up to a year. A uh, few people like Jimmy Brown have. Some of their fixed term memberships go up to a year, but the, the customers like them because they're you know there's a an, a fixed price to it and there's an ending point to it, 
and on your end they're easier to maintain because you create your content once and then you don't ever have to fool with the content again um, set up an affiliate program and after you've got a few members into your fixed term membership the affiliates will promote the site for you so with being able to create these e-courses with the e-course PowerBot, it's easy to create these fixed term memberships. You could deliver various parts to your uh, e-courses through a, a weekly drop-off and have uh, content for you know the easy three to four months, which is the general term for a fixed term membership. Okay, I stopped the video there because, like I said, that at the end of it, it just pitches a, a bonus I was given for buying that product. And like I said, that's a, a video I made a couple years ago. But the reason why I wanted to show it to you is another thing you can do with the PLR that you have on your hard drive. And using them to create those little um, e-courses like that and then putting them inside a fixed-term membership is one of the hottest things that you can do. And it's still an evergreen product you can create uh, they're easy to do um, you know I highly recommend you know if you've got lots of PLR if you got access to PLR you know that you use it in a manner like this like I said uh, one of the things I try to do when I get good quality PLR not, not, not all PLR is you know worth doing this with I'm not gonna say you can just take any PLR and do this you want to make sure it's good quality but when you get, get good quality PLR you know you want to think of various ways you can use it um, you know gone are the days of being able to just post it straight to your blog and doing much good with it because you know the search engines you know they, they recognize PLR after you know it's been submitted a couple times and you get put in a duplicate content filter so you know it doesn't do you much good to post it to your blog anymore unless you have a private blog and you have you know a selective list of people that you send the links to then it might work to post it to your blog but the thing about it is, I mean, if somebody would happen to go search and, you know, see if that content's available somewhere else, they would see it somewhere else. So if you were charging a membership for that, you know, that, you know you'd get caught pretty quickly with it. But, you know, that's a that's a method you can use, you know, to, to use the PLR that you have. Um, you can also do it, you know, with anything. It doesn't have to be PLR. It could be, you know, something that you have resale rights to. As long as you can get the, the source copy where you can copy and paste it into text files, get it into text files, because the program does work with text files only. But I wanted to show that to you guys, because like I said, I get lots of questions about, you know, PLR and what you can do with it. And of course, you know, the the, the, the general thing that I recommend to everybody, you know, is uh, do, go through the five steps in the PLR workshop that I have. Um, I'm sure you guys have probably seen it. If you haven't, just ask me and I'll send you the link to that PLR workshop. But you go through those five steps, you know, to get PLR ready to use, and then you can actually take it to the next step and actually re have it rewritten and, you know, turn it into something unique, which is, you know, a good thing to do in itself, but it is time-consuming, and if you're not good at uh, writing, you know, you wind up having to outsource it, so it costs you money. So, you know, like I said, that's just another way of repurposing content that you already have, and I'm sure all you guys have tons of content on your drives that you're not using now. Okay, the next thing I want to do is, like I said, I want to talk to you guys about uh, I want to talk to you guys about uh, done for you packages and products. So we're going to actually try to use the browser with this. So let's click the browser. I need to get one of my links here. Okay, now, if you guys aren't seeing this full screen, there's arrows over on the left-hand side that you can click that will collapse my picture in the chat. I think it may. 
yeah, it does. It puts the chat at the bottom of the screen. So if you're not seeing it full, the, the website full screen, just click that little arrow over to the left, and it'll, it'll kill my picture so that you can see the website. Are you guys seeing the website to start with? I want to make sure you are seeing it. Okay, Kathy's saying she's seen it. Great. Okay, the the website I got pulled up here in this browser now, this is actually the link that I have in my email signature when I send out a reply to somebody. And this is the one I get the most questions about because I do have that in my email signature. And this is actually a product that Aaron Danker sells. It's a done-for-you sales funnel. And if you go through this, you know, he explains about a sales funnel with you know what's involved in setting up a sales funnel and of course we're not going to go through all of that but what I wanted to get down to is the actual diagram here at the bottom or towards the bottom there we are this is the actual system setup that this package has and this is typical of most done for you packages they usually start out with a squeeze page and then they have set up an offer page and then they have uh, when somebody opts into your list they get seen that offer page and then if they turn that down they get sent to a down sale offer or if they decide to purchase it they go to a another offer an upsell offer and then they go to confirm sign up. Um, Jim says, I'm only seeing the gray FB. I don't know what the FB is. Okay, Michael, are you, Michael said Facebook. I don't know why you'd be seeing anything about Facebook on here. <laughs> Mary says she's seeing the 16 steps. Michael, I think he said he was seeing the diagram, which is what you should be seeing. You should be seeing a sales funnel diagram. Is anybody besides Michael seeing the diagram? Elizabeth says she sees it. Kathy says no diagram. Roy says he's seen the 16 steps. Okay. I don't know why some of you guys are seeing a, something about Facebook. There shouldn't be anything about Facebook in this. <laughs> Maybe you had Facebook open earlier or got it open in another window. I don't know. There shouldn't be anything about Facebook in this at all. Anyway, if if you're not seeing it, maybe you need to uh, log out and log back in again. I don't know why some of you guys are having to do this so much. Um, but anyway, it's, this is being recorded. And you'll see it in the, the, the video recording if, you, if you're still having problems seeing it. Okay, so you guys actually have to scroll down. You're not seeing what I'm seeing, right? So maybe maybe you need to scroll down. Okay, Elizabeth says you have to scroll down yourself. Okay, I thought you guys would see what I'm seeing. So you need to, let me see where it's at on this page. It's down towards probably the last fourth of the page. It's right after step number 15 is the diagram that we're looking at. Okay, yeah, so if, if you're not on the, you need to scroll down to, it's about three-fourths of the page down, 
uh, you'll see after step number 15 a diagram and that's that's where I'm talking about is this diagram I didn't realize that you guys had to scroll down as well I thought it, you, you all followed right along with what I'm doing but apparently it doesn't work that way okay give you a second if, if you're there at the diagram let me know Just type yes in the chat box if you're seeing the diagram I'll make sure everybody's seeing the same thing okay great okay so what I was saying is um, this is your typical setup of a sales funnel and this is actually the sales funnel that this package talks about but uh, your typical sales funnel starts out with this squeeze page and it's just your opt-in page and once somebody opts into your list or gets they get sent to an offer which is generally known as an OTO offer and then they get sent to if they decide to take it they get sent to the payment processor and then to the download page and then to the confirm sign up now if they happen to turn that down generally there's a down sell and then they get sent to a a secondary offer that um, they choose to either take it or not and if they do take it then they go through the payment process and then to the confirm sign up um, as you follow along you see that they're added to the list and then they're sent to the download their the gift that they were after and then they become then they're sent to uh, the download page where they can download the gift and then they're asked to become an affiliate and then they're shown how to get traffic now this is generally how a typical sales funnel is set up now the problem that I have with these sales funnels and they call themselves done for you and for the most part they really are I mean everything is set up for you um, they, generally a few things you have to edit you know maybe your name uh, maybe your website URL or a folder name if you're putting it into another folder besides the main root of your website and of course payment buttons you may have to add your payment button to it but um, that's basically what you have to do with one of these done for you sales funnels like this and a lot of people get confused in the fact that you know they think well it's done for you so everything is done well I would say these are 90 percent done and what I mean by that is you know the whole system is set up for you I mean it's got your whole complete uh, sales sales funnel set up for you and it even gives you the autoresponder emails to set up you know with the tells you what links to put in there and sometimes they even set up the links for you in the autoresponder messages too depending on um, who you get it from and how much work they went into to preparing it but the the key missing part of all of this is actually the very first block the traffic there's not a done for you sales funnel that I know of where they actually give you traffic and that's where a lot of people buy one of these packages and they think well this is my whole business set up I've got everything I need now but then they don't send any traffic or they send low quality traffic and then wonder why they didn't make any money with it um, so that's that's one of the things I don't like about done for you sales funnel because it gives people the impression that all they do is pay a fee and then everything's done for them in which like I said 90% of it is done for you as far as the website set up and the sequence of everything is set up for you uh, the product line is set up for you and they even give you the autoresponder messages to use but the key ingredient is the traffic that goes into that sales funnel if you don't send traffic to that sales funnel it's never going to do you a bit of good um, like I said this is an example of the one that I have in my email signature that you know this is one I get the most questions about since it's one you know that I don't really promote but you know I, I promote it indirectly I've had several people that bought this program and you know they go through and get it get it set up and everything but then they wonder why they didn't make any money with it and when I contact them and find out why they didn't make any money with it trying to get some information from them I find out that they didn't send any traffic to it they just put it up and was hoping that traffic would just find its way to it and that didn't work um, you, you've got to send traffic to that front opt-in page that squeeze page or it's never going to work for you at all it's 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 a lot like buying you know a car if you don't put gas in the car I mean it's, it's never going to go nowhere it may be a brand new car a nice Maserati sitting out in your driveway but if you don't ever put any gas in it's going to sit there it's never going to go anywhere so the ones that um, have replied back to me with the traffic that they they have tried to send traffic to their 
sales funnel, you know, I find out that they, they're not sending good quality traffic either. Um, now, I've talked about this several times with you guys about sending quality traffic to your opt-in pages. There's lots and lots of ways you can get cheap traffic, and cheap traffic is, for the most part, you know, low quality traffic that's probably not going to convert. You may get some people to opt into your uh, mailing list and get your free gifts, but it's going to be extremely hard to convert them over to buying anything from you. So when you do decide, you know, to get a, a done-for-you sales funnel like it's set up for you, or if you even go through the steps of creating your own. Now, this also applies to creating your own sales funnels. Uh, I mean, this layout right here is the perfect example of how you should have your sales funnel set up if you do decide to create your own. But if you do go through the, the process of setting all this up, you know, don't don't leave the most important part out of sending, you know, quality traffic to it. I mean, you've invested time and money into getting this set up or you purchased it and had someone to set it up for you. You know, don't stop there and just hope that people are going to find it or go to safe list and these text ad exchanges and places like that and send that kind of traffic to the opt-in page because it's never going to work for you. Um, I think it was last week. Yeah, it was last week we had the, the training on solo ads. If you have a system set up like this, you have a sales funnel set up like this for yourself. Like, like I said, either you've purchased this one or you bought another one of some sort. Like I said, they're pretty much all basically the same. They all go get the same setup with them. Um, go ahead and invest some money into some paid traffic. Now, whether that be solo ads you buy or you buy a classified listing over on the Warrior Forum or you buy some Facebook ads, you know, Go ahead and spend you know twenty five fifty dollars on some paid traffic so you can get some good quality traffic going through that funnel. Um, I mean, you can work yourself to death trying to get free traffic into this thing, and you know you can get tons of free traffic. I mean, traffic is one of the easiest things to get. I mean, you can either work for it or you can pay for it. Uh, the kind you work for, you know, it can take a while to get free traffic through working for it. And especially, you know, like if you're going to, you know, depend on SEO or that kind of thing or uh, trying to get it all through, you know, Facebook posts and group posts, you know, that takes a long time to generate that kind of traffic. Um, if you do decide to do free traffic, the best free traffic method I know of is forum posting. That seems to work the best as far as free traffic that there is, but it does require, you know, spending hours a day on the forums, you know, posting a lot and having your form signature set up to go to your opt-in page. But, um, you know, invest, you know, $25, $50 once you get one of these things set up to get some good quality traffic into it, and you'll see, a, you know, an immediate result. You can get, you can gauge how well the, the thing is going to convert for you by having, you know, some good quality traffic sent to it. Michael's saying, Rick never got the link for last Wednesday class, could not get in after the signing after signing up um, Michael you didn't get the the replay links that I sent out last week is that what you're saying because you must have gotten the, the link to get into this one oh the last Wednesday class oh, okay uh, well, like I said, there was a lot of confusion on last Wednesday's class, and I caused it. Uh, you know, I'll be the first to admit it. I caused it. I, I didn't. I wouldn't clear to everybody on the last Wednesday class and what they need to do. Hopefully, you'll get it this Wednesday, Michael. Um, like I said, I caused that whole mess. I, I, I know that it, I was causing a mess, but I did. But hopefully, it's all straightened out now. But um, Anyway, going back to sending traffic to your sales funnels, like I said, this is your typical sales funnel setup. This is, you know, when you're setting one up, this is the kind of diagram you should go by. And like I said, if you've gotten any of the, who sent me an email, I, every reply I have has this link on it. You can go to this page and look at this diagram. And you should actually print out this diagram so that way you've got something to work with as far as how to set up your sales funnels. 
yourself and you know unless you're going to buy one if you're going to buy one it's probably all this is already done for you but once you get your sales funnel set up like this you know go to the next step and you know send some good quality traffic to it and like i said now if you want to work for that free traffic the best free traffic that i know of is going to the forums you know a niche related form whatever it is niche you're in and just doing you know posting some threads and starting threads and having your email signature set up in the, the forum that's the best free method I know of for traffic. Uh, SEO works, but it takes a long time to, for it to work. And what I've seen with most people that try to go the SEO route, they'll go out and they'll post all these articles, they'll get all these backlinks, and they're expecting immediate returns. And, you know, you may get an initial jump in rankings. You know, your, cert, your site might get indexed really quickly, and you may get on the first page or two of the listings initially. But then it doesn't last long, and you start, you start dropping, and you start keeping up that SEO thing. And eventually it, it settles out to a point, and depending on what keywords you're going for, you know, you could end up on page 5 or 10 and really struggle to get it back up on the, you know, the first page or two. Because most people, when they go to search engines, they'll look through one to three pages at the most. If you're not in that first one to three pages, you know, it's really hard to get SEO traffic. But what I've seen most people that try to do the SEO thing, um, they'll spend all that time and money on doing SEO, and if they don't see immediate results from it, they give up on it. And the thing about SEO, it takes a while for it to kick in and really work for you, and it's something you have to do consistently. You can't do it just once and hope that it works for you, and it's going to last forever. It's something you have to, it's, you have to constantly keep working in it because, as you all know, the search engines keep changing the way they do things. Um, what's ranking good today, next week they'll change something in how they're indexing pages and your site could just totally disappear or it could end up on page 100. But most people, like I said, when they try the SEO thing, you know, they, they were looking for something that's instant and quick. And, you know, there are things that will give you an instant result, you know, that will, but it generally doesn't last long at all. You're lucky if you can get, you know, a few days out of it. Uh, after a while, you'll settle back into some to an average listing somewhere and then you got to work from there to get it back up most people give up at that point and they say their funnel doesn't work because you know they're not getting any traffic to it when the, the truth of the matter is you know that they, they're not they're not putting their efforts into getting traffic to it to start with i mean search and seo work to get your pages and your sites listed is great it's something you know you can work on, but I don't. I don't recommend that for anybody to be their main source of traffic because you're just depending on those search engines to send you all your traffic. Um, I recommend if you, you know, if you're going to set up a sales funnel, to go ahead and go the extra step and invest a little bit into yourself and, you know, use some paid traffic because you're going to see instant results from it, and you're going to know right off the bat whether your sales funnel is set up properly, whether it's fine-tuned or not to optimize. Like I said, I have most of my sales funnel set up now to. Where when I get a new subscriber, even a freebie subscriber, on the average, I'll make you know twenty to thirty dollars in the first month, on the average of new subscribers coming in. And that's not saying I'll make twenty to thirty dollars on everybody that opts in. I'm saying on the average, it could be somebody that buys a hundred dollars for the product, but then might be two or three people that never buy anything. But it averages out to you know it's twenty to thirty dollars on the average when I get a new subscriber into a sales funnel. Now, if I'm sending traffic, uh, getting subscribers just to a one-off uh, gift, you know, just promoting one product, now that may not be true. Uh, case and example is um, I have all of the Monkey Marketing Mastermind products. Every one of those came with uh, an e-course of its own, but I'm only it's only set up to market that one product in each one of those uh, autoresponder sequences. What I'm seeing from that is it's taking 100 subscribers to make five sales, and that's all they're buying is that one product in there. Now, of course, I'm moving them over when they buy something from that autoresponder sequence over into my buyer's list, which puts them into my other sales funnel, which you know should get them back up to that you know 20 to 30 dollar average in a month. You know, once they're moved over to that list, but had I not be doing that, all would be all I'd be getting from them is that initial. I think it's a 9.95 products what it's selling, something like that. But that's 
an example of having just one autoresponder sequence set up that you know it only markets one product and that's one of the places another place where people fail is you know they'll set up an autoresponder sequence that may have seven or fourteen matches messages in it that only markets one product one upsell and of course after somebody's bought that one product if you don't have them moved over into another uh, mailing list automatically through your autoresponder account well then that's all they're ever going to buy from you is that one product so that's another place where people fail and that's in where they fail by not having a sales funnel set up to start with okay Roy's saying if you set up your sales funnel always be making very small tweaks because it can be made to get better results yeah exactly um, you never know with your sales funnel what's going to actually make it work the best and I talked about this last week when you're getting people to opt into your list you're sending them to an OTO offer when they first opt in your goal is you want to try to get that to convert at 10 percent 10 percent I found to be a good number so in other words if you're getting a hundred people to opt into your list you want 10 of those people to buy your OTO that's what you should shoot for as an average if you're not getting that 10 percent well then that's when you need to adjust the OTO page itself and it could be you know just something as simple as changing the headline you know something to grab their attention more to make them want to read the page or it could be you know the the price point you know whatever it is you're offering uh, one one way I do split testing on a product just to see how what the price point it can be is I'll start it out at what I would like to make out out of it and let's just let's just use some round numbers here to give you guys something to work with let's say I want to make ten dollars off of it and I'm sending traffic to that opt-in page and I'm only getting you know five people to out of a hundred to buy the the OTO and I've got it set at ten dollars well the first thing I'll do is I'll go in and I'll half that price I'll put it down to five dollars and kiss of course again I'm just using made up numbers here but I'll half that price just to see if that's the the point that's the, the sticking point of you know getting my conversions to work if it does go up from there and I get you know the 10 percent well, then I know that it was the price that was the problem so what I'll do from there is I'll slowly increase that five dollars up you know 50 50 cents or another dollar at a time until I finally find the point where the conversions start dropping back again and then that's how I know you know I need to leave it at a set price but most of the time I've seen with OTO upsells something that's priced seven to ten dollars is the average what people expect to see um, I've seen price points set way too low and that kills your sales uh, people feel like you know it's not uh, a good enough product worth buying if it's set way too cheap and of course we talked last week about you know having the multiple packages of uh, products for sale those don't convert very well either but anyway that's that's what I want to talk to you about as far as the sales funnel setup there goes now I want to show you another sales funnel and this one's actually set up a little differently and I don't have a diagram of this so I'm going to have to explain the whole thing this is actually a WSO that's running right now and the reason why I know about this one is because it's a friend of mine that's running it and he sent me the link to it today so let's go back up here okay you guys tell me when you see the warrior forum page load here Okay, everybody seeing the warrior forum page now okay now I'm going to, have to look down in his WSO here to find what I wanted to show you guys let's, let's see where is it this is a friend of mine uh, Andrew Waring he's a he's actually a 
professional list builder sells solo ads. I buy solo ads from this guy. So if you guys do decide to buy solo ads, this is a good one to buy them from. He does have good quality traffic. Anyway, this is a WSO he listed here today. And it's, a, and it's again, a done-for-you sales funnel. And it's about a third of the way down to the page. You'll see... You'll see a my best ever done for you sales funnel. And it's got a little done for you sales funnel graphic with a dollar sign coming out of a box. Um, scroll down to that point there when you tell me when you found that it's a little box. It's a cardboard box with a dollar sign in it. Michael says, "How can you contact?" contact him I think that's what you're at how can you contact him I'll I'll send you guys a link to his uh, solo ad page where he sells solo ads I'll post that on the replay page for you he's a good one to buy solos from I buy solos from him a lot anyway down below this little graphic here he talks about this sales funnel that he's set up now how he has his this one set up and this is this is the new way that people set up sales phone. I'm sure you all have seen this. They start out with a squeeze page, and it's a really great offer to get people to opt in. His, his, this one he has here has 60 video tutorials, which you know is always attractive. You know, to offer somebody that much for free to get them into your um, mailing list. But the second part of what he does, if they, somebody should decide not to purchase. He actually has an exit script that shows him a second squeeze page. And on this second squeeze page, it's... No, I don't know exactly what the... Let's see if we can scroll back up here and see what if he tells what the 60 videos are about. Uh, he doesn't say what the videos are about. I imagine there's something online marketing related. But anyway, the he has an exit script set up for... If somebody leaves a page and decides they don't want those 60 videos, he has a second squeeze page that's shown to them that t shows them about um, how to secure their WordPress site, which is, you know, he's still staying within the online marketing niche, and that's the key I'm trying to make with you guys, the point I'm trying to make. He's offering a second squeeze page if they leave the first squeeze page that's staying within the same niche. And he's hoping that, you know, that they'll opt in to get this WordPress training to secure their WordPress sites. So it's, you know, it's a double squeeze page setup that he has set up here in his sales funnel. And like I said, this is the, the modern way people are setting up their sales funnels by using an exit script. And we talked about exit scripts last week in that, you know, a lot of people don't like them. You know, they're, they're kind of annoying sometimes. But, you know, whether you like them or not, they work. You know, you should be using one. Um they're going to they're going to convert for you a lot better if you use one as opposed to not having one at all. And he goes down through the you know, the rest of the sales funnel looks pretty much like the rest of them. It's got a one time offer and then download pages that are monetized. He gives you an email sequence um, in this thing. I think it's yeah 18 messages. So you know this is a like I said it's a variation of the sales funnel that you've seen on the previous screen where you know it works almost exactly the same except it has an exit script set up in it that offers them a second squeeze page on another free gift that's you know related to the first gift um, like I said he doesn't say exactly what those 60 videos are in that first gift but I'm, I'm almost guarantee it's something related to online marketing or WordPress I would bet it's probably something related to WordPress it's probably 60 videos on how to set up a blog or that type of thing. I'm like I said, I, I don't, I didn't purchase this myself, so I don't know exactly. I've, Andrew just sent me the link to this, and I was looking, looking at it today, and I wanted to talk, add this in on the, the talk we was going to have about done for you sales funnels. So, what he's doing, like I said, what he's doing here is he's, you know, he's, he's sending, setting up a sales funnel that has two squeeze pages in it. And the hope is, you know, to get them in. Now, he's probably got them going into the exact same autoresponder sequence. He doesn't say that in here for sure, but I see that he's 
offering 18 messages in the autoresponder sequence, and he doesn't say anything about having two different autoresponder sequences. So I, my guess is that had you have opted in to the first squeeze page, you would get the same gifts that were seen on the second opt-in page as well, probably as a bonus, which again, you know, if you have a, a huge bonus like that on the thank you page when somebody opts into your list, you know, you're way over delivering, which, you know, builds good rapport with your list subscribers. Where says there, or Michael says there, a quick nowadays the pop up I mean yeah uh, they're, they're they're a lot better than they used to be and now you know there's still some browsers that can block the pop-ups you know there are some browsers you know that that's not going to help you to have one but you know for the most part uh, exit scripts still work I would say with 80 to 90 percent of the browsers that go to an opt-in page you're going to have you know, a good 10% of them, you know, that have uh, some sort of pop-up blocker enabled on them or a third-party program is going to disable the pop-up blockers. But, like I said, I, I use them on my pages. and I, You could even use them on uh, sales pages as well to, you know, if you send somebody to a sales page and they decide they don't want to purchase, you can actually use a, an exit pop to send them to a squeeze page to give them maybe a free sample of the product that you're selling. But anyway, this is uh, that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about the Done For You Sales Funnel. I wanted to show you exactly what a Done For You Sales Funnel is. Like I said, if you go back, and I'll, I'll include this link on the replay so you can look at that diagram again. I highly suggest you print out that diagram and keep it handy because when you set up a sales funnel, that's exactly what you want to model is that diagram that was on the previous page. If you have a sales funnel set up like that and you go through it and you tweak it to hit, like I said, hit those 10 percents, that's my common percentage I want to hit is 10% of the people moving through the funnel. So if you if you set up your sales funnel like I showed, like it shows in that diagram, and you you know keep constantly tweaking it till you hit them 10%, well it's just a you know it's a little money pumping oil well to for lack of a better term. You invest some money in paid traffic, some good quality paid traffic into that sales funnel, and it's going to pay for itself and put you in profit on down the line. And depending on what the kind of products you're selling, I mean, you could have your setup like I have mine set up to where, you know, I'm making money on, you know, the the following days, not the initial when they first join. You know, I'm hoping to get my ad cost recouped on the first you know, when they first opt in, that's that's my initial uh, goal was you know try to recoup my ad costs. And, you know that works most of the time. I won't say it works every time because it just depends again on the type of uh, traffic that you're sending. I mean, you could pay you could pay somebody 50 bucks for a solo ad and it not convert worth crap. I'll just tell you, it, it happens. <laughs> um, but for the most part, if you're dealing with somebody that has good quality traffic and you send you know, 100, 200 clicks to a page. If you've got that sales funnel converting at 10% on down the line, 10%, you're going to get your money back on the initial them signing up with the amount of traffic that you send. And then from there, like I said, the, the rest of your sales funnel should be tuned where you make, you know, anywhere from 10 to $20 is a good average to go for. Um, like I said, I've got mine tuned now to where it's 20 to $30 is what I can average on new signups. Uh, Roy says, I don't see any master resource rights in this product. Uh, you're talking about uh, Andrew's funnel here. Michael's. Um, like I said, Roy, I, I haven't bought this product. I don't know what he has set up in it. I, the only reason I want to show it to you guys is the method he's using for using a second squeeze page in the initial sending of traffic. I don't I don't have any idea what Andrew has set up in his funnel. I know he did contact me and want to know if I wanted to submit some emails into the follow-ups. So I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a couple of my products set up in his follow-ups. I don't know how many. He, he asked if, I could, if he could include some of mine in his follow-up messages, but other than that, that's all I know about it. I ha, like I said, I, he didn't give me a review link to it or anything. I just 
he told me that it launched today and I went over to look at the, the sales page and I wanted to show it to you guys because of the way he has it set up just to give you guys you know another method of the way people are using sales funnels Michael says how many tweaks do you have to do usually uh, Michael the the thing you're going for is you're, you're like I said my goal is to hit 10% when I send traffic to an opt-in page and I get 100 people to opt-in, I want 10, 10 of those people to buy something right off the bat. If, uh, if I'm not hitting that 10%, well then the first thing I'm going to look at is my OTO page and I'm going to start making adjustments to that OTO page. Um, like I said, it could be something as simple as the headline is the problem. Uh, I'll adjust the headline a couple of times and if that doesn't seem to make any difference, well then the next thing I'll look at is the price point and it could be the price point right off the bat I mean you could just start with the price point and in fact it's probably one of the best places to start is with the headline first and then the price point next um, uh, the way you can check if the headline is the problem is if you, if you have Google Analytics installed on your you know set up on your website and you're using the, the Google tracking code you can tell how long people were on the page before they left if you see people staying on the page just five or ten seconds and leaving, then that tells you that, you know, the initial impression they're seeing is not enough to keep their attention to get them to scroll down and read the rest of the page. So that's where you might want to work on your headline and your graphics or the, the whatever's above the fold on the first load of the page is what you'd want to work on if, you're, if you've got uh, Google Analytics installed and you're not seeing people stay very long. If you are seeing people stay, that means they're, you're, you're at least getting their attention and they're scrolling down into the page, but if they're still not making a purchase, then the next thing I would look at would be the price point. Um, like I said, my first thing I do with the price point is it's kind of drastic. People don't recommend it, but this is what I do. I initially half the price. If it, Like I said, I gave the example of $10. If I got something set at $10 and I'm not seeing that 10%, I'll whack it down to $5 and see if that helps. And if it does help, then I'll start upping it until I start dropping below that 10 percent again but like I said for the most part if you've got a good quality uh, OTO that you're offering seven to ten dollars is a sweet spot uh, when you get above ten dollars people have to start thinking about it whether they want to purchase it or not um, seven dollars is probably the, the the most popular number what people see the most but seven to ten dollars is what you know I consider to be the sweet spot if you've got a good quality product that you're offering on that OTO. Roy says, Michael, when your sales funnel is perfect tweaked, it it's a little more split test. Yeah, it, it can take a while, Michael, to actually dial in your sales funnel. And you know the good thing about um, like for example, Aaron's sales funnel he's already got that tested and he knows what converts so when you buy one it's already set up like it you know it'll give you all the pieces and all you do is set it up you know you for the most part you know you're getting one that's already been tweaked it's at that point the the problem is your traffic that you're sending to it you got to send good quality traffic to it to hit those 10 percents uh, when you're first initially setting one up yourself once you've built yourself is when you got to go through all that testing to make sure you know that you're getting people to at least stay on the upsell the OTO, OTO upsell page and continuing to read down and see what you're offering them Jen says he also has this I'm not sure what that is Jim let's click it and see here Okay, yeah, that's another one of Andrew's products. I thought that one was October of last year. And actually, he has a diagram on this one, too, that shows how this one's set up. And as you can see, it's basically the same as what I showed you with Aaron's. It's got this the opt-in page. Uh, what he's calling a wait page. I can't read that, that dark text in that dark color. 
Anyway, he's got a diagram here that shows how this one is set up. That's a good link, Jim. Thanks for posting that. Okay, so let's go back to the... Jim's link didn't work for you, Michael. I don't know, it may be... Did the link work for anybody else but me? <laughs> oh, okay. So you guys can't see the link. Uh, let me see if I can post it for you. I forgot about that. You guys might not be able to see links that are posted by users. There you go. Can you guys, did that link come through where you guys can click it? Okay. All right. See, we learned something tonight. Anyway, that's another one of Andrew's funnels that he sold. Looks like about October of last year. And the, he actually has a diagram on that one that shows how that one is set up. I didn't pay any attention if it has that same setup with the exit offer and a second squeeze page. Let's look and see if it does. I don't believe it does. No. No, this one's just your traditional sales funnel, to much like what Aaron's just set up. The new one he just posted today is one that has that uh, exit pop or exit script with the second squeeze page. Okay, let's go back to the chat room now. That's all the links I wanted to show you guys. you guys have any questions on either the little demo I showed there at the very beginning, the e-course power bot, or the sales funnels, before we go into the questions I got in email? Okay. All right, well, let's go ahead and do the questions I got from emails then. Get those out of the way. All right, the, the questions, I only, like I said, I only got three questions this week. Uh, the questions I got, first one says, where do you find good quality resale rights products not found in the average PLR membership sites? Um, where I find most of mine is being on other people's lists, especially product creators' lists. They will send out uh, emails about uh, deals that they've set up where they're uh, selling resale rights or PLR rights to a product that they've created. And that's, that's where I find the most of them. And sometimes I'll hear about them through other people. Uh, being in you know Facebook groups and Skype rooms and that's that type of thing I'll hear about them that way as well but most of the time it's from being on somebody else's email list um, good ones to look out for are Jay Boyer James Jones and uh, Jeremy and Simon um, Jerry uh, what's his name Jeremy Gislasum I think is how you pronounce his name Gislasum I'm not sure how you pronounce his last name. Anyway, those are the top people that I watch their emails. They generally have high-quality resale rights. Now, those other guys that you see that offer resale rights, and next thing you know, you're getting 50 to 100 emails about them. Everybody else is trying to sell that same uh, their affiliates for that same product. Those are good quality products, but the problem with them is, I mean, they're just being circulated too much. I'm not saying, you know, they're not worth buying, because I do buy some of those as well. But generally, the ones that uh, come from James Jones and uh, Jeremy and Simon and 
the other ones that I mentioned, James Jones, and those are usually the high quality ones, Jay Boyer and uh, John Rhodes. Okay, we have some questions there. Uh, Jen saying, do we have the so this software in the inner circle? Uh, currently, no, but I can put it there. I will put it there for you guys in the inner circle. Yeah, Justin Popovic, he, he has good quality PLR and resale rights. Let's see, the next question is, how much time a day do you spend running your online business? And that varies. <laughs> I don't have, you know, a, a strict set of hours that I work it. I can tell you I spend the first hour of every day checking my support desk and emails. That's the first thing I do every hour, first hour of every day before I get started with anything. Um, but as a lot of you guys know, you know, I still work a school network contract that uh, I have to give them so many hours per week. So I wind up having to do that second off in the day. And then generally it's in the afternoons when I get to come back in and work on my online stuff. And it dep just depends on if I'm actually in the process of creating a product or launching a website or doing a training, how many hours I would put in in a day's time. Um, I would say my average is about four to six hours a day. That would be my average. Um, I'm not one of them people that, you know, they claim, you know, work one hour a day and that's it. It doesn't seem to work out that way for me. But then again, I'm into a lot of things. So that's the reason why I spend more hours. And, you know, I guess some people spend more hours than that. But I spend on average about four to six hours a day on my online business. And then the, the last question I said, I got says, if you had to start all over, what would you do? Well, we're getting some questions here. Roy says, when we first start our business, we need to work hour, work hard and lots of hours. It says, do you... Kathy says, do you work weekends too or take them off? I try to take uh, Sundays off for sure, Kathy. Um, I, had to, I do occasionally schedule the strategy calls, business strategy calls for people on a Sunday if you know if it, they're in a time zone where that works out best for them because I hate to make people stay up all night long for one of those strategy calls. But um, generally, yeah, I work part of the day on Saturdays. I don't work all day on Saturdays. Um, and, and again, it just depends on you know what I've got going at the time. If I'm getting ready for a product launch or uh, launching a new course in the membership or something like that, you know, and I have to do some research and get you know my outlines ready. You know, I may have to work more hours on a Saturday. But I try to I try to not work as much on weekends. And like I said, I try to avoid Sundays if at all possible. Uh, about the only thing I'll do on Sundays is you know. The business strategy calls and I only do those for people that are in time zones or you know it's just hard for us to meet up to have one of those calls and Roy's right when you're first starting out your business you put in the most hours uh, once you get things set up and fine-tuned to where all you're doing is just driving traffic to your sites well then that's when your you know your time decreases to where you have to put into it I mean you're always I've not seen a self-perpetuating online business yet that you know you don't have to do some work in it. Uh, you're always going to do some something as far as traffic goes or networking with other people to JV with them or something. You're always going to wind up having to do that. I've never seen any business where all that gets done for you. Now I have seen self-funding systems. Let me say that there there is such a thing as self-funding systems where. You put an initial investment into it, and if things are set up right and the traffic's right and that kind of thing, the investment comes back and it feeds back into your PayPal, and you know you can keep someone self-funding that way. Uh, a lot like what I do with my Facebook ads. My initial goal with Facebook, I said I have Facebook set up to take the cost of my ads directly from my PayPal account. Well. When I set up a campaign on Facebook, say I set it up for the last one I did was $35. I wanted to I wanted to make 
$35 back into my PayPal account so that when Facebook came to PayPal looking for $35, it was already there because of the sales that I'd made. So, you know, that's what I call a self-funding campaign. And those are, those are not hard to set up once you get your sales funnel tweet set up right. Um, it's not by choice, Michael. I still might, might. Michael's asking, did it work? Are you talking about the Facebook ad, Michael? It, initially, it was a, uh, what we, what I did that ad for, it was a test to, to see if, uh, Facebook would approve squeeze pages. And that was a test I did in the list building master class. And they set it up really quick. They actually approved it. And I was, that's, what, that's what the main goal was, to see if they would approve it. And plus, I was demoing to the people in the class how to set up a Facebook ad. The initial, what I got out of it was a $22 sale and then a $7 sale, I think it was. So I made, I, I, can't, I'm, I can't remember exactly. It was $29 what I made initially. And it was $35 what I had set up for the campaign. And the people that went into the funnel, you know, they went, in, they went into a 14-day autoresponder sequence. So initially, when Facebook took the payments out of PayPal, there was $29 of it that had been invested. So I, I wound up putting $5. They took $5 from my PayPal account to finish out the cost of the, the ad campaign. And I haven't checked ClickBank. It, it was all ClickBank products I had set up in that campaign. I haven't checked ClickBank in a couple of days to see if it's made any more sales. Surely it has, I don't, you know, but I haven't checked it. But it, it almost paid for itself, Michael. But I, I added 59 people to my list from that campaign. And like I said, initially when I did the results video, and it's posted in there, Michael, when you're in the uh, membership site. I'm not sure if you have access to that part of it yet or not. But when you do have access to it, and of course I can send you that link if you want to watch it. Um, initially after that test I, I brought in $29 of that $34 spend so you know it worked out pretty good I was only paying like 11 cents for those 59 subscribers so that was pretty good let's see well I, did I answer that last question okay no I didn't uh, the last question says if you had to start over all over what would you do if I had to start all over again like I said, I initially started out, the first first thing I did was I took uh, a coaching class with Kevin Riley, and I started writing short reports. And if I had it to do all over again, I don't know that I would go that route. I mean, it's not that it didn't make money for me or, you know, get my reputation built up. You know, somebody puts out quality products, it's not nothing, anything to do with that. It's just it was a lot of work. Um, of course, I'm taking it that they're asking that question. If I had to start over right now at the current standpoint I am right now, I was a lot younger then, you know, and I could stay up all night writing those reports. I couldn't do that now. Um, if I had to start all over again right now, I would still go into the resale rights business model. I, I just tend to tend to like resale rights better than anything else, mostly because, you know, the um, you get evergreen products that you can set up into a sales funnel, and once you get that sales funnel tweaked, it's just a matter of sending traffic into it. So I would probably still go that same route as far as going into the resale rights business model. Uh, definitely, I would get into product creation again. Um, product creation has probably been where I've made the most money is by having my own unique products. And of course, you know, when you have your own unique products, you're going to get affiliates that are going to sell for you. So you know that helps a lot. Anyway, I hope that answers their question. Um, like I said, I, I don't know that I would start out again doing the short reports, especially like if I were to start right now today at the age I'm at right now and the hours I'm willing to work, I don't think I would do the short reports because I just don't think I could stay up all night writing reports now. Uh, Jen says, can we have OTO on the giveaways? Yes, you sure can. And in fact, it's recommended that when you submit a gift 
to the giveaways, whether it's a private giveaway or one of the major giveaways that you have an, an OTA set up, because it's, it's basically, you're just sending people into your sales funnel that you've set up. Um, you should have, you know, the, the traffic that's coming from those events going to the same exact sales funnel that you would send paid traffic to. Uh, the only difference with it being is that, you know, uh, particularly with the major giveaway events, it's lower quality traffic to where, you know, they, they're still apt to buy something, but they're not, you know, it's not as good a traffic as the private giveaways like the one that I posted over in the Facebook group earlier about today that I started, I joined in on today. And in fact, I think it was Jen, Jen, you were the one that told me about that, I believe. Weren't you the one that told me about Kevin Fahey and his private giveaway? I think we talked about that over the weekend. Yeah, okay. I looked back through my emails and found the link. I heard that he was getting ready to start one. I looked back through my emails this weekend, this weekend after you mentioned that, and I found the email where he talked about that and forgot about it till this morning. <laughs> and this morning I said, oh, Lord, it's about to start, so if I'm going to do this, I need to do it now. <laughs> so that was a rest thing, just joining that thing, and it's, it's working out really well. But, uh, yeah, uh, you're sending that traffic into the same sales funnel that you'd send paid traffic into. So, you know, you definitely want to, you know, have an OTO in there. Of course, you know, like his private giveaway that Kevin's running, you know, it was the entry fee to join in and a click uh, click minimum, which the click minimum for his was really low. And most of them that you go into those private giveaways, you know, they, their click minimums are 300 or 500 clicks. His was just 100, which is easy to do. Anybody can send 100 clicks. If you had to just go out and buy a solo ad, you can send 100 clicks. But, um Does that answer your question, Jen, about about the OTOs? It's basically, like I said, you're, it's the same exact sales funnel. It's just, you know, you're sending a different type of traffic to it. Okay, we're running right at about an hour and a half here now. Do you guys have any other questions before we sign off for the night. I didn't want to keep you guys too long. Like I said, I'll have, uh, I know that video, the volume in it was kind of low. Like I said, I, I wanted to show you guys that video, just a demo of something else you could do with PLR. I'll have the, the, the original video posted on the replay page for you can watch it, and I'll, I'll try to do something about the volume on it to get it a little bit better. Like I said, I, I made that video a couple years ago. And it was actually a demo I did for my list when I was first setting up that product for sale. And Jen, I think, I asked earlier if, it's, if I was going to put that product in the inner circle. And yes, I will put it in the inner circle for you guys. It actually it creates a software. It turns those PLR articles into a software. And you guys know how well software does. Software outsells just about everything. And you could use those, like I said in the very last part of that video, to set up a membership site with them. You could offer one of those courses for a week or a month or whatever. But anyway, if, uh, if you guys don't have any other questions, let's go ahead and call it a night tonight. I um, appreciate you guys showing up. And Kathy says, should WordPress Supercache be disabled when setting up a site? Uh, it just depends on your hosting provider, Kathy, whether you should enable it or not. Um, I have problems with it with some of the hosts that I have. Um, HostGator, I don't have a problem with it, but then some of the other hosts that I work with has a problem with it. So it just depends on your hosting provider whether it's going to help you or not. But then again, I have a, I don't have, well, I do have one of the shared hosting accounts, too, of HostGator. I forgot about that. But I have a VPS with HostGator as well that I use the most. I don't think on my shared hosting I do have the WP Super Cache enabled. Okay. Well, guys, let's go ahead and call tonight. Like I said, we're running out an hour and a half. I don't want to keep you guys too long. I want to thank you for coming tonight. I'll have the hopefully have the replay up for you guys tomorrow night, tomorrow evening. Um, hopefully the video will be better where you can hear it a lot better. Uh, appreciate you guys coming out tonight. Uh, you guys are in the inner circle. 
we will be having a class Wednesday night. Hopefully you'll get the emails this week. Hopefully everybody got signed up to the right list this time, and we'll get the emails of the reminders. But uh, thanks for coming again tonight, guys. Have a great evening.